guys, welcome back to 6pm kickboxing. My name is Alexa. If you haven't been here before, and if you have, then welcome back. Uh, let's start in our nice neutral stance. Our toes, our knees, our hips are pointed forwards. We're tucking our hips um, so that we have a nice uh, straight lower back. And let's start off with a little bit of a neck stretch today. So we're dropping one ear to our shoulder. If you want to deepen that stretch, you can take the opposite arm and hold on to it behind your back. Other side, dropping that ear to your shoulder. Thinking about nice soft knees here, thinking about a nice uh, engaged core. And let's uh, drop our chin to our chest. And you can roll through if you like. And real quick, let's turn our, just our eyes to look over our shoulder. Just like we do anytime we're striking behind us, we wanna turn just our face, we don't wanna turn our whole body. Other side. All right, let's go down to some shoulder rolls. Bringing those shoulders up to your ears and dropping them down into your back pockets. And I'm starting to feel my stance here a little bit. You want to start feeling your legs, start feeling your glutes, your core. Uh, let's do some huggers or some chest openers, whichever you want to call them. Really focusing on that Squeeze in the shoulder blades and that pump through the chest. Sometimes I see people kind of doing noodle arms on this, which is fine if that stretches it for you, that's great. Um, but if you find the stretch doesn't do a whole lot for you, um, it might uh, maybe helpful to keep your elbows engaged. I kind of keep my arms in a slight uh, loose C shape, almost like I'm going to touch my elbows to each other rather than my hands. Then I find that. Uh, engages um, the chest a lot better for me. But do what works for you. Let's do some helicopters. Pivoting, 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 always, always. Today we're gonna do just some things that I like to do, just some combinations I like to do, because it's Friday, the weekend's coming, and I just thought it'd be fun. Don't forget that rhythmic breathing. We're breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth, keeping that heel low to the ground, getting a twist all the way through. All right, let's return to square. Let's do some, actually, let's do some reach and pulls. So exhaling with every strike or every other strike, if you want to breathe in for two, out for two. practice um, kind of filling your tank, so to speak, your lungs with air and exhaling for a couple with that same air. So we kind of release a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, <sighs> rather than inhaling between every breath. We kind of breathe in for a couple <sighs> and out for a couple. And this is really helpful when you're learning combinations. Let's do knees. Palm to knee or elbow to knee, as long as you're not crunching into it. Make sure we're staying nice and tall. Getting a little bit of a stretch through the side glute here. And starting to engage our hip flexors and our lower abs to bring our knee up. We're gonna sit here for just a little bit on this one because my legs are really sore today. Couple more. Seat kicks. Again, really focusing on tucking those hips. You're probably not gonna feel this very much if you don't have tucked hips. And you'll have to engage your core to do that, to zip the hips forward. Okay, let's do some kicks for a stretch. We'll do five to the front, five to the side, and five to the back. Stay 
stay nice and tall for those kicks towards the front. You'll lean a little bit for these ones to the side and to the back. Of course, make sure you look behind you. Anytime you throw anything behind you. Touching down in between if you need to. And keeping a nice soft standing knee. I notice when I'm losing my balance a little bit, it tends to be because I'm straightening out my knee. All right, take a minute or so, stretch out. Well, maybe not a minute or so, uh, maybe 30 seconds. Grab a drink if you need it. And we're gonna get started in a pretty short workout because we're gonna run through a fair amount of combinations today, I think. So let's start off um, doing one of my favorites. We'll do some back stuff. So we're gonna go down and do our swimmers. Um, yeah, we'll start off with swimmers. So I'll yell them out. Uh, we'll be doing them for a time. Starting now. So I'll be yelling out different exercises every time we switch. So starting with swimmers. If you need a break here, you can rest your feet on the ground. You should feel your core here, not just your back. Couple more. And cobra lat pullbacks. Pulling into a fist, pulling those elbows back towards your waist. I like to exhale as I pull back. This should also help engage your core. And make sure you're looking at the ground. Unlike me, I'm looking at a timer. Tabletop crunches. Try to keep your knees above your hips here. We don't want them here and we don't want them out here. Maybe in a different ab exercise. But for this one, knees above the hips. Try to keep your elbows out. Don't reach with your elbows. A lot of people do this. Don't pull on your head. Five seconds. And we're gonna come out into a starfish position for starfish crunches. So one arm to one leg. You don't have to actually touch it, just as um, far as you can go. And I'm using my other arm to brace myself. Just a couple more. sure I set the timer. I did. Chain right up, kicking back, making sure that your knees are brushing past each other. So from the front, that looks like this. We don't want our knees to be way out here. We don't want to be opening up because that's a different kick. You also don't have to go too high. A back kick to the knee, devastating. 10 seconds. Rechamber at the end. Squeezing at the top. All right. Okay. Let's get right into it. We're just gonna do some of uh, my favorite combinations today. 
And the first one, we'll start off with the kick coming off the back, and then we will, um, and then we'll work our way up. So this is gonna be pretty roundhouse heavy because I love roundhouse kicks. Left leg forward, right leg back, shoulders down and back, nice tight fist, strong guard. Let's do a roundhouse kick off the back, so pivoting, kick with a pointed toe, and let's either land and lunge before our hand strikes, or if you're very familiar with this, you can kick and land into your lunge and your hand strikes. And those hand strikes are going to be a back fist, and an elbow actually. So we're going to come in, we're gonna kick off that kick, we're lunging into a back fist and an elbow to get really, really close. Because remember elbows, we're right on top of that bag at that point. So we're back fisting here and elbowing off the back as we're moving in. So a full speed. So by the time our elbow connects, We've had enough room for the back fist, and we're still moving in on that elbow. Kick off the back. This should switch you every time. <coughs> Pardon me. This is a really good time to think about that breathing and where you're breathing. So I'm sort of filling my lungs like a tank or an accordion, you could also think of it as, filling with air and slowly with each strike, we're letting out a little bit more. You could also breathe after the kick, whatever is comfortable for you. And let's have it um, a lunge back. If you're not already, a lunge or a shuffle. So keeping that nice footwork. I think I like a shuffle for this one. Make sure on these roundhouse kicks that you're pointing your whole side to your opponent. That's where you want to end up when you're striking. We don't want to be have our hip back here because all of our power is back here. So we're really holding back if our hip is all the way back here. So we're, rather than crunching here, we're crunching here and lunging in with those arms. Let's do two more on each side. And I'll turn to the side for you. here on our knees let's do the same amount of zombies like seven to ten zombies can be really hard so make sure you're not going so far back that you can't use your quads to pull yourself back up and your abs and make sure you're not sitting on your heels you want to stay nice and straight that's the challenging part this is a lot easier <laughs> as far back as you can doesn't have to be far for you to feel it In fact, my quads kind of hurt today, so I don't know why I did this to myself, but I think I'm gonna do seven. <laughs> Squeezing the glutes as well to keep your hips nice and tucked. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna call it quits there. And back up, got some nice warmed up quads. Let's keep up the um, roundhouse kicking. And let's do a double rising. We'll start off the back. And we're gonna make our way to the front on this one. So for this one, let's just do a double rising. I'm gonna go for the knee and the head, um, but do what's comfortable for you. If you're aiming for the head, you should also have the control to hold your chamber before and after, I feel. Um, because you don't wanna kick someone in the head and then get caught and tear a muscle, that's the worst. So double rising, you could also do 
knee ribs. Um, and let's finish that off with a nice simple, um, let's just do a jab cross. So one, two, square jab cross. One, two, square jab cross. It can be really easy to forget what your hands are doing during the kick. So try to make sure that you're pointing. Sometimes I forget also and kind of hold them back here. We want to protect our face. And from the side, that looks like this. If you're having a hard time with the double rising, um, just make it two roundhouse kicks. You can touch down in between if you need to, or you can do one. Well, so that would be touching down, or you can do one, hold, two, land out, jab, cross. I find that's the that was the most effective way for me to learn double rising. Um, additionally, if you're trying to aim higher on roundhouse kicks, it's really important, I feel, to get that second pivot in there. So I'm pivoting once for my first kick. I can pivot again to get my leg up to the head. Just landing forward this time. One more on each side. All right, now that we've got it off the back, we're gonna do these off the front. Um, feel free to, again, just make it two roundhouse kicks off the front. So that's one, two, and I might even do that. In fact, I'm gonna do uh, their double rising with a one, two, and um, let's land it back. So that'll be kick, kick, land it back, jab cross, and a little shuffle forward because now we're switched. One, two, we'll land it back, jab cross. So full speed, one, two, we're gonna land it back, jab cross. Head height may be a little hard to land back on this one, so I think I'm gonna just do um, a lower height for this one. But feel free to do what you want, or what you have room for. So. One, two, land back, jab cross. Or you can aim both of them to uh, one height and just touch down in between. That's probably a little bit easier to land back. So a couple variations on this one. One, two, let's land it back, jab cross. If you've got to keep going, we'll do like a minute more of this. Uh, Forgetting my own combination. Really, I mainly just like this for the roundhouse kicks off the front. You could also do two to the legs or the knee. So touching down in between if you're having trouble with balance, or if you just want a more powerful kick. Um, double rising if you want that challenge for balance and abs. it so much for that second kick if you're going high it's a little bit tricky to land back but it is a good challenge for our abs side thrust kick super super quick and the way I like to teach this is starting left leg forward right leg back we do our roundhouse kick off the back land in and we're gonna do um, as big of a shuffle as you have room for so if it's little that's fine we're gonna step behind pointing our heel to our target 
picking up that other leg and uh, striking with the heel, just like a back kick, except this time, instead of being facing away, I have my guard pointed at my target and my side is more exposed. So I'm pointing one back pocket to my opponent. So let's just do that for a couple rounds. Roundhouse kick, land, little shuffle, side thrust kick. This is a really tricky kick if you don't get it right away. That's totally fine. It's a hard one. Land, little shuffle, side thrust. And I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like from the side too. Roundhouse kick, land. I'm gonna do a little tiny shuffle just because you guys might not have as much room as I do right now. Kick, land, tiny shuffle. Kick, land, oops, sorry, tiny shuffle. Let's do one more on each side. We're gonna kick, we're gonna land. I'm gonna point my back heel to my target. Other heel comes up to stomp. All right. So now from here, let's do this one from side to side just because I think it's easy to keep easier to keep the shuffle. So we're just gonna do a little step behind side thrust kick. We're going to land that kick out. So if you need to touch down, do so. We're gonna land it out and we're gonna do back fist like from before and then across. And then we will just return to square. And then we're switching. Step behind kick, land it out back fist cross. And from this way, we're stepping behind, kick, back fist cross. So from the side, shuffling, kick, back fist cross. If you want more to think about, <laughs> if the uh, side thrust kick is easier for you, keep that roundhouse kick. You can either touch down and do the shuffle or you can do your roundhouse kick, cat over here or chamber over here, side thrust kick, back out for your hand strikes. So our two options, stepping behind, kick, and landing square to our opponent for that back fist cross, or roundhouse kick, side thrust kick, landing out back fist cross. Up to you. Two options here. If you really want a challenge, you can make both these kicks double rising. <sighs> Otherwise, don't worry about that. <laughs> Just the two kicks or the one kick. Let's do just a couple more of these. If you haven't tried the roundhouse kick side thrust, I highly recommend that one, just because it's fun. And it's fun to practice our chain kicking. It's good for your abs, it's good for your balance. One more on each side, whichever one you're doing. I'll turn, uh, switch to the easier one. And again, from the side, All right, quick drink. So we did a lot of combos today, or a lot um, in regards to what we have time for in these classes. And now let's just do a nice smash session. So left leg forward, right leg back. We're just gonna do some knees and some elbows. Let's do, um, let's lunge in with an elbow off the back, just because if our momentum's coming in, I think it's a little easier to strike off the back first. So a lunge, we're gonna do a driving elbow, driving elbow, and then let's come in with a rising elbow, grab, knee, knee, land it forward. So all together, that's lunge, elbow off the back, off the front, rising off the back, up into the solar plexus, grab, knee, knee. So you can imagine you're grabbing somebody by the shoulders and bringing your knee right up into the groin or the gut, depending on if they're bent over already. So lunge, elbow off the back, off the front, off the back, knee, knee, land it forward. And we'll do this for a short time. Lunging forward, elbow, 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 knee, knee. Lunging forward, elbow, elbow, elbow. So that's three elbows, knee, knee. Five strikes all together. Elbow, 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 knee, knee to move you forward. And from the side. And a little shuffle. 
back. Lunge, elbow, 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 knee, knee. Hopefully I'm still in frame. I'll start further back a little bit. Lunge, elbow, 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 knee, knee. Keep it up. You're almost done here. Whoops. You can tell I haven't been teaching normal classes in a while. Because <laughs> I keep forgetting my combos. Elbow, 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 knee, knee. Just a couple more. I'll turn this way so I don't have to keep turning around and look at the timer. If you can, try to speed it up. Try to go for ultimate smash. Elbows and knees are like your ultimate smashing strikes. And remember, we're hitting with that nice sharp part. We want a nice open elbow shape as best we can because that's going to be stronger than if our arm is closed. Don't leave your hips behind on this. Make sure they're pushing your elbow through your opponent. 10 seconds. Keep it up. down now. I'm going to do a little bit of shoulder rolling and breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Sinking in those knees. All right, let's do some chest openers just because I think that always feels good. So lots of combos today, a little bit less body weight striking, but those are some of my favorite things to do. I love elbows and knees because I love getting really, really close and uh, just uh, doing some pulp smash. And of course I love roundhouse kicks. They can be a little bit tricky, but um, once you get the hang of them, you're gonna wanna keep going higher and higher with those kicks. Let's do a side stretch. Speaking of roundhouse kicks, inhaling up, exhaling over. And if you were confused where I met before about where you should be feeling the crunch on your roundhouse, this, these muscles here, that's that uh, oblique here, and a little bit of the side glute as well. Other side, you can pulse or hang out, whichever you prefer. I'm probably gonna pulse for right now. Just depends on how relaxed you want your muscles to be when we're timing side. Keeping that arm over your ear, not in front of your face, on your side. Okay, and let's actually come down and do that leg stretch from before. So just to show you guys, again, what that looks like, I'm stepping my leg forward, and I'm going to make sure my hips are tucked, so I'm using my glutes to squeeze my hips forward. And you should feel, if you're squeezing your hips forward, a nice stretch right through here, right through that hip flexor in the front there. Lots of people have tight hip flexors. This is a really good way to target them. It's also a good way to learn how to do the splits. At least, so I'm told, I can't do the splits. Let's lean that back, walk that foot forward a little bit if you need to, but I'm pointing my toe up and I'm sitting my hips back. If you need to, touching the ground for balance. I always do, because I'd rather focus on the stretch than on balance, but if you wanna do both, that's totally fine. You wanna try to balance into this. You could also probably rest your um, arms on your leg if you really, really wanna deepen that. And let's kind of uh, stand up into this and turn towards that leg and bend forward a little bit. You should feel that through your TFL on the side of your leg. And if you've never felt it before, it should feel weird. <laughs> All right, let's do the other side. Got some lovely hairs on me. So sitting into that, really tucking those hips forward so you feel that stretch in uh, 
in your uh, non-standing leg, your stretched leg. Pardon me if I keep sniffling, I have allergies, as anybody else who has allergies is probably uh, aware of right now. Sit our hips back, toes pointed towards the ceiling. You can also play with the uh, positioning of your foot here if you point your toes forward. Target slightly different uh, spots in the back of the leg. For me, towards the ceiling works best because I really have um, tight hamstrings, tight muscles in the back of my leg, so I really wanna target those. And the more you sit your hips back, the deeper that stretch is gonna be. All right, and standing, or uh, rising up into that, turning, and then we kind of push forward until you feel that. Can you feel it? No? If you can't feel it, you should try to come down a little bit more, I think. Um, I think a lot of times people aren't, uh, I, I think that you kind of have to play with it a little bit because it's a little bit different for everybody. But for me, this position targets that spot. You'll know when you're feeling it because it feels really strange. <laughs> All right, so let's do one more thing on the ground, actually, and that's going to be, um, we'll do sleeping pigeon, pigeon today, but if you like regular pigeon, do that. Foot flexed, no matter what you're doing, if it's sleeping or regular, foot flexed to protect the ankle, to protect the knee, and we're pulling that towards us. I kind of sit up into this because I, like, really have to curl into a ball to deepen that stretch, but you can rest your head on the ground. Other side, flex that foot, pull that knee. And you should feel that in your side glute, which is a lot of what we were using for those side thrust kicks, which are really tricky. So if you have any comments or questions about that, feel free to um, leave those in the comments down below. And uh, let's finish off class with one big deep breath all together. Rising up, inhaling up, and swan diving down to the side so I can still talk to you. Let's swing a little bit here and really drive home that hamstring stretch. Shake out your arms, shake out your shoulders, roll out your shoulders. And when you're ready, we're going to shake our head no in a nice big movement. We're going to nod our head yes in a nice big movement. And tucking our tail, we're going to breathe in and in, one vertebrae at a time, up into a full body stretch. Full body stretch, fill up those lungs, and release. Awesome work today, you guys. Um, I hope this video finds you well. I hope you have an awesome weekend. It looks like it's going to be beautiful out, and um, we'll see you guys on Monday at 6 p.m.